So we have these two boxes here and we need to fill in the missing forces, okay? So for this first one, is the box on planet Earth? Yes. So I'm gonna put an FG. And then are we resting on another object? Yes. So I'm gonna put an FN. And again, I'm just trying to make sure these are all equal as I'm sketching them. Okay, so we are trying to make arrows. Whoops. Trying to make arrows equal in length. Okay, so then for this next one, box sits on a ramp. So again, this is this is when we drew up top. So box is on planet Earth, so we have an arrow pointing to the bottom of the page, and we label that arrow FG. It is resting on a surface. So we have an arrow that is perpendicular to that surface and we label it FN. Okay, so this next question, um, this is kind of tricky. Like if we were all in class, I would have a bunch of scales. We could weigh ourselves and try this out, okay? Um, since we don't have that, we just kind of need to talk it through. Okay, so I actually want to talk through the force diagrams first and then try to answer the question. Okay, okay, so for this first one, student is just standing on a scale. So if you are just standing, you have no other forces acting upon you except for gravity force because you're on planet Earth and normal force because you're being supported by, by another object. Okay. So I'm just gonna draw those two forces. So this is FG. And then we have FN. And again, do you see how I'm trying to kind of, again, I'm trying to make these about equal Okay, so here's this next one. Student is being pushed down. So if you are on a scale and someone is pushing you down, are you going to weigh more or are you going to weigh less? More, right. It's not because you actually have more atoms in your body. It's because someone is pushing you down, right? So we have a gravity force, and I'm gonna try to draw this about the same length as that first one. Again, this is just kind of approximate, but I'm labeling it FG. And then I'm gonna do another that is FP because we are being pushed down. Okay, so here's the deal. We have forces that are balanced out. Meaning, if you add them together, you're going to end up with a zero value, okay? So in this, in this example over here, so remember downward forces are always negative, upward forces are always positive, but Fn, is equal to FG, the magnitude of them at least, right? Over here, oops, FN is going to be equal to FP plus 
FG. So that means that we need to make FN. So do you see how we go up to like right here in the FN on the first guy? So I'm gonna go up a little bit further to like the top of his head. to signify that now we have a larger magnitude of Fn. I'm just trying to, okay. All right, so now in this final one, we are being pulled up. So if you're on a scale and you're being pulled up, are you, do you weigh more or do you weigh less? less right and it's not that again it's not that you have less atoms in your body it's just that you weigh less okay so your fg is still going to be the same so i'm going to try to make this the same but now this fp is in the opposite direction do we see that how the fp has to be going up now So I want us to, as I'm kind of filling this out, to think about what that means for the FN. Because remember, these two, like this side, the top and the bottom forces have to balance out. So it's going to end up meaning that FG minus FP is equal to FN, okay? Because if you add up the, the top forces, they should equal the bottom force, just like over here in this middle example. When we added up the bottom forces, they're equal to this, this upward force, okay? So, I don't know, I'm trying to make this like, maybe like that. Yeah, like both of those together are equal to the FG. Again, it's just an approximation. So here's the, the coming back to this question. What does the scale tell you? FN or FG? Does it tell you how many atoms are in your body or does it tell you how much, how much weight the scale is supporting? FN or FG? FN, yeah, okay. Because we see through all of these like you're going to, weighs more, maybe. Student weighs more. And over here, student weighs, whoops, weighs less. Okay. FG is the same in both of these. The thing that's changing is FN. Okay, so moving down to this bottom part, I want you to think about if you are holding something out, and if you're if you're holding out a heavy object, okay, so I'm holding out a bottle of water. If you hold out a heavy object and then all of a sudden you let go of that object, what's going to happen to your arm? So your arm, your arm is going to naturally spring up, right? It's going to get lighter. And why does that end up happening? So your arm springs up. 
The reason is when I have this bottle of water in my hands, holding the weight, the weight is acting like a push force. So like FP, downward, right? So if you have FP downward, what ends up happening is FN is much larger, right? So if all of a sudden we remove the FP, do we see how there's an imbalance here between FN and FG for just like a split second? Like, right, like my, my arm goes right back. But for a split second, the FN is so much larger than the FG that you have upward movement. So when you remove the FP, FN is greater than FG for a split second. this causes your arm to move upward. Okay. And how does this demonstration show the presence of, of normal force? You're specifically manipulating Fn by adding and taking away FP. Now, I know that the fact that I'm using the forces within those sentences makes this more difficult to understand. I'm typing that out fully aware that that is what happens here, okay? But also what is happening here is as you are reading through these sentences, you are being forced to incorporate the definitions of the forces within these explanations, okay? Our goal for today and like the first couple days of this unit is to just get super, super comfortable with these force definitions.